Um, hope everybody's doing well. Um, good week of practice for us. Hopefully we got some things cleaned up and got better. We need to, and I uh, feel like the guys are in a good, good uh, position and uh, good shape mentally and uh, put the finishing touches on tomorrow and uh, hopefully go out there and play better this Saturday than we did a week ago. So I'll open it up for questions. If questions, raise your hand. Hagan. Hey, Coach Stoops. Uh, you talked about, you know, how the players are feeling mentally. What have the attitudes been like in the locker room uh, over the past few days? Uh, Seem to be very good. Um, business as usual. Uh, guys uh, understand that uh, we have to play better in certain areas, and it's been good. Good. John Wong. Mark, you mentioned last week that Chris Rodriguez was a big boy and he could kind of handle the challenges that were coming his way. Uh, but I know that also doesn't mean that you're just going to let him flounder. I mean, what have the coaching staff been doing? What has the team been doing to kind of help him get his swagger back? We don't have to do anything uh, for that. Um, you know, you're right to this extent, John. Coaching is coaching. Um, you know, Coach Settle does a great job. Liam does a great job. You know, again, I, I said it time and time again, I don't need to make an excuse for uh, Chris Rodriguez. He's a very good football player. And we're not making excuses. He was not at 100%. I mean, I said it four times. You know, he's, he's practiced every day, every rep this week. That generally carries over to the game. He was not able to do that a week ago. Again, I'm not making an excuse for him. He wasn't at 100%. He wasn't himself. I think he'll be fine. John Hale. Mark, when, you, when we talk about Chris's fumbles, the ones earlier in the year were when he were carrying the ball. The ones last week were on the handoffs. Was there anything in particular on the handoff last week that, that they need to work there was on? A number, yeah, there was a number of things wrong with the handoff on, on one in particular. Uh, that we don't need to get into finger pointing. There was a, there was a, it was, there was a, many different things were wrong on that play. John Clay. So. Mark, obviously with Tennessee's, uh, you know, high tempo offense communication is a big key on the defensive side. How do you feel like your defense has been communicating this year and how have they done this week? Yeah, it's, it is, it is going to be under as much stress this week as ever you are correct i mean just with the just with how fast they go and how unique they are as far as splits and and uh the pressure that they put on you so um we will be tested this week we've worked uh, extremely hard you know with crowd noise and trying to communicate and make them communicate defensively quickly and also get your eyes back because you could see they've scored some touchdowns even uh, last time out, you know, when they played uh, just by guys not being ready. So, uh, you know, you better start there. Let's go back to John Hale. Mark, as you all go down the stretch here, how much is that four-game redshirt rule back in play? Is that something you're managing with guys, or are you just playing guys if you need them at this point? We'll play guys if we need them, but uh, with that under consideration. Jeff Drummond. Mark, I was wondering, uh, Tennessee's MO has kind of been to jump out on people really early this year. A ton of their points have been scored in the first quarter. Is that something that you address with the team or in your preparation or, or coaching? Or it, it has a lot to do with just how quickly they go. It's, it's almost impossible to simulate that for an entire practice. We do for segments. We do for periods to get them acclimated. But it's a it's a it's different story when they're running their offense uh, with something that's new to us, you know, at least for the week, and um, you know, at the tempo with which they go. Uh, you put that all together, and it's it's just really hard to simulate that. And then uh, you know, generally things probably slow down for defenses, and um, you know, and and with them, hopefully, you know, you could get them off track at times to slow them down. Uh, but it's not easy. You know, when they're on track and early in the games, when they 
can script their plays and they have a good idea of the, the plays they're going to run. Um, it, it's extremely fast. So I think that has a lot to do with them jumping out. Josh Moore. Hey, Mark, any anticipation about Marquan having him out there or not this week? We'll see. John Wong. Mark, so much has been made of Tennessee's tempo. Liam was asked on Tuesday uh, about the tempo of his offense, and he said there were a few occasions where he felt like he could have exploited the opponent with some more tempo. Do you agree with that? How, how do you assess the tempo of the offense this year? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are a huddle team, so it's hard. You know, we're, we're, we're not a tempo team. Um, but I agree with Liam in that, you know, you, it can help you at times. Um, you know, we have been in two minute drills this year and been effective and, uh, you know, you, you, where you have to use tempo. Um, and, uh, you know, for them, they helped simulate uh, Tennessee for us this week. And by doing that, you know, clearly you could see an advantage at times, uh, but you have to be who you are. Um, so I don't know if I answer your question. I mean, we're not going to change overnight. We're not going to go to some drastic tempo uh, overnight. I mean, Liam is a, is a pro style huddle offense, um, but um, is there an advantage at times to going fast? Absolutely. John Clay. Mark, I'm just wondering how you feel like your leaders did this week uh, with the team going after last week and going into this week. They, we need our leaders to step up. We've challenged them. I've challenged them. Uh, they know that they have to lead right now. So I feel like they have, but uh, we're not there yet. John Wong. It seems like you face a very specific type of offense every week. I mean, it is SEC. Last week it was Mississippi State, Air Raid, Mike Leach. This year it's this high tempo Josh Heupel offense. When when you have your opponents look at you, what what would you like them to think is specific about Kentucky when they're playing Kentucky? What's what's different about Kentucky? Uh, uh, that's that that's up to you and them or whatever. I'm not going to get into defining and giving you a headline on what I think our definition is. I mean, uh, you know, we've had a clear identity of who we are. We're trying to get better every week. Uh, we're doing the best we can. You know, we're trying to improve in the areas where we fell short. Hagan. You know, uh, talking about, you know, the, these last few days of practice, uh, what are the key things you think you need to, to focus on going into Saturday's game after having a, a few practices under your belt this week? Between now and then, you're saying? Yes. Uh, it's, it's always uh, – a lot mental now. I mean, we have one more practice tomorrow uh, that will rip through, you know, 30, 40, 50 plays. But, uh, you know, for the most part, the work's done. They know the game plan, but it's about focusing and doing a little extra and you know, watch a little extra film, make sure they get in, get some sleep tonight and they're well rested for tomorrow's practice. And there's a lot of mental work to be done. Uh, coaches give tests, tips and reminders. So there's quite a bit of mental work between now and Saturday. Jeff Drummond. Hey, Mark, are you able to say anything more about uh, Jordan Wright or Jutan McLean and their status this week? Pardon me? Are you able to say anything more about Jordan Wright and Jutan McLean, their status this week? I'm not going to address that at this point, man. In the we'll see column? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah. All right, nothing else. Tell, tell Josh to give me his injury report. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. Uh, bye. bye. Thanks, Coach. Thanks,